look at the aircraft that became one of the most enduring American light attack airplanes of all time. The use of aircraft carriers during the Second World War saw the need for the development of the attack series of aircraft, also in the role of close air support of ground troops and precision attack of the opposition ground-based facilities and services. However, at the end of the Pacific War, the startling statistics of Japanese ships lost in action were telling. Of the 39 battleships and cruisers lost, four were sunk by opposition ships, eight by submarines and an incredible 27 by air attack. The Allied attack aircraft had become a very important weapon in the US inventory. Recognizing early into World War II that the SBD Douglas Dauntless was rapidly becoming obsolete, the Douglas Company started work on its replacement, the XS B2D Destroyer. During the development of the destroyer, the Navy changed its requirements and it was cancelled. Douglas went back to the drawing board and literally overnight created the drawings for the XBT2D, which went into production as the AD-1 Sky Raider. The new aircraft made its maiden fight on March 18, 1945, two weeks ahead of schedule. It was the most powerful carrier-based aircraft ever built. Its single engine with its three fuselage stations and six racks on each wing could carry varied assortments of ordnance including rockets, mines, torpedoes, bombs and napalms. In fact, it could carry more ordnance weight than that of the famous Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. Sky Raiders went on to see combat in the Korean War, and with the outbreak of the Vietnam War, the A-1 was again pressed into service. Sky Raider flew with all branches of the service throughout the conflict and with the Vietnamese Air Force. The A-1 was a welcome sight to a downed pilot. The Sky Raiders carried out bombing strikes and close air support operations. It was used in operations against the Viet Cong strongholds in South Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. It picked up its famous call sign Sandy as an essential component in the recovery of downed aircrew. It joined a team of helicopters in the rescue effort. The A-1s provided suppressive fire on the enemy, while US Air Force Sikorsky HH-3s or Jolly Greens plucked the downed aircrew members to safety. Despite being a propeller-powered aircraft, A1H Sky Raiders of the 77th Task Force hold the incredible feat of shooting down two MiG-17s. The Navy used the Sky Raider up until April 1968, completing over 100,000 missions in Vietnam. Their surplus Sky Raiders were turned over to the formative South Vietnamese Air Force. The US Air Force continued to use their Sky Raiders in rescue operations for a number of years. When it eventually became time to retire the A-1s, they had been so successful that they were actually replaced by three different aircraft. The A-3D Sky Warrior in the bombing mole, by far the largest and heaviest machine designed for a carrier up to that time, the Guaman Tracker in the role of anti-submarine warfare, and Douglas's A-4 Skyhawk in the attack role. The chief engineer of Douglas Aircraft's Navy plant, Edward H. Heinemann, was in 1951 one of the world's most experienced designers of combat aircraft. Many of his aircraft had been attack machines, among them the AZO Boston Havoc family, the A-26 Invader and the unmatched A-1 Skyrena. With the establishment of the new jet age, 
The Navy saw that their new attack bomber would have to retain most of the abilities of their well-loved Sky Raiders, and also the faster speeds now being associated with the new jet engines. The designs of the time had seen concepts becoming increasingly larger and ever more complex. Even more expensive, both for the customer and the manufacturer. In December 1951, Heinemann had rationalized a new approach to design, which took nothing for granted and tended to use new and simplified structures and systems and make every part do the work of two. The US Navy asked him to apply the philosophy to a requirement for a new attack aircraft, to fly certain specified missions at a maximum speed of 495 miles per hour and weigh not more than 30,000 pounds. In a parallel development, Lockheed and the famed Kelly Johnson were to use a similar theory or minimalist concept for their outstanding F-104 Starfighter for the interceptor role. Heinemann never considered turboprops and from the start made the new attack bombers smaller than contemporary fighters. But the results were so startling they were hard to believe. Still wholly unconvinced, the Bureau of Aeronautics, or BUAIR, told Heinemann to double the bomb load and add 115 miles to the combat radius, perhaps hoping the whole proposal would collapse. Heinemann told them the new gross weight was 14,300 pounds. Though many of the experienced BUAIR staff publicly proclaimed the aircraft couldn't be built, Douglas was given an order on the 21st of June 1952 for an XA-41 prototype, soon followed by nine production A-4D-1s, each to have an empty weight of 8,136 pounds and a gross weight of 15,000 pounds. Most of the plane's concept had rested on the engine. The choice was the Wright 565, the American version of the light but powerful and efficient British Armstrong Sidley Sapphire. Using his minimalist concept, Heinemann had found that reducing the overall gross weight had allowed the aircraft to be smaller and burn less fuel. Weight savings were made in all areas, not allowing for a weapons base save 500 pounds making the wing with very advanced high-lift devices, including groundbreaking leading-edge slats, enable it to be made so small that it didn't need to fold. This saved another 250 pounds. The wing skins were made in one piece from tip to tip, and the whole wing formed an integral fuel tank. As the Navy hadn't made high-speed one of their requirements, Heinemann cut out the afterburner, using alternating current electrics allowing for the use of thinner cables, designed a new lightweight ejection seat, and packaged all the various electronics into a single box pressurized with dry nitrogen and with a single multi-pin connector. The achievements in weight saving had been made without impairing the original design's concept and had in fact tremendously enhanced many aspects of the little plane's abilities and performance. The XA-41 was rolled out in February 1954. Douglas test pilot Bob Rahn made a most successful first flight on the 22nd of June. The new aircraft was a remarkable performer, better precision and control power than any US Navy fighter, and a much better view. The only major problem was aerodynamic bars at the tail. As a quick temporary fix, Heinemann redesigned the rudder with a single skin down the middle with half reds on each side. This was meant to be replaced by a properly engineered fix later, 
but nobody had time, and to this day, every A4D has a single surface rudder. The A4D-1 went into combat service aboard carriers in October 1956 and was followed by the A4D-2 with single-point pressure fueling and an in-flight refueling probe, as well as other changes. Heinemann had also designed a streamlined series of external bombs and tanks used on many US Navy aircraft, as well as a completely new idea. This comprised a streamlined nacelle housing fuel, a hose reel and drogue, and the necessary hydraulic drive and control system. Skyhawks were the first buddy equipped aircraft able to refuel each other. The next variant in 1959 comprised the first with limited all-weather capability, resulting in designation A4D2N. And on the 12th of July 1961, the first A4D5 started the second generation of Skyhawks with the more efficient Patton Whitney 552 two-spool turbojet engine and enhanced capability. The lower fuel consumption stretched range by some 27% and the re-engineered airframe had five stores stations instead of three and a maximum weather load raised to 8,200 pounds. And from 1962, the weather load was upgraded still further to 9,155 pounds. With subsequent further development until 1966, the Skyhawks and Surtis were able to achieve outstanding results and were much loved by the pilots who flew them. By this time though, Douglas thought the A4 was getting to the end of the line. Heinemann left Douglas to join General Dynamics and the US Navy wrote the VAL specification for a Skyhawk replacement, which led to the LTV A7 Corsair II. Even the Douglas Navy plant El Sagunda was closed and concentrated its facilities at Long Beach, which had previously built under US Air Force machines. The new VAL requirements issued in late 1963 were for nearly double those of the Skyhawks. To speed delivery and reduce costs, all applications would have to be based on existing aircraft minimizing the Navy's risks and prototyping time by using current technologies. On February 11, 1964, Vought won, against other strong competition, the contract to develop the subsonic A7 Corsair II. Developed from the supersonic F8, interestingly, it was the first supersonic design adopted into a subsonic design. The A7 first blew on September 27, 1965 four weeks ahead of schedule and was adopted by the Air Force and Navy and went on to write its own extensive chapters in the Annals of Military Aeronautics. However, in 1965, the 2C TA-4E with the 552-8A engine started a new subfamily of tandem Skyhawks, nearly all with dual flight controls. The production TA-4E was designated TA-4F and it was produced alongside the A4F, the first of the so-called Canal Skyhawks with additional avionics in a large dorsal fairing. By 1969, production had begun on the most numerous of all Lake model Skyhawks, and a variant that will be around for many years in the USA. The TAU was a purpose-designed advanced trainer, which in Vietnam proved to be an excellent FAC or forward air control aircraft. In 1974, the Navy display team, the Blue Angels, 
took delivery of their A4 Skyhawks in replacement of their McDonnell F4 Phantoms. The decision was originally taken on economic grounds, but they went on to fly them for 13 years, 20 years after the Navy's final order. What the A4 lacked in speed in comparison to the F4, it more than made up for in aerobatic precision. The Skyhawks were finally replaced in 1987 by FA-18 Hornets. In 1979, manufacture of new Skyhawks finally came to an end at Long Beach, 22 years later than originally planned with total deliveries amounting to 2,405 attack aircraft and 555 two-seaters. But work on a very large number still in active service has never ceased. In 1980, the U.S. Marine Corps introduced yet another version, the OA-4M, a dedicated two-seat FAC aircraft based on the TA-4F. There could well be further versions for electronic warfare and other missions, and for possible additional export customers. The original A-4D-1 had a weapon load of 4,000 pounds, then thought an excellent figure especially since it had been doubled to meet the Navy's original requested specification. The modern versions can carry 3,500 pounds on the center line, 2,250 pounds on each inboard wing pylon, and 1,000 pounds on each outboard pylon, a total load of 10,000 pounds. This with a wingspan of less than that of a World War I Sopwith Cannon. When the tiny Douglas attack aircraft was only on paper, many experts said it couldn't be built. It wasn't quite the Sky Raider long-haul, long-endurance bomb truck the US Navy had in mind, and outwardly seemed to be too small to be useful. However, Heinemann succeeded in creating an aircraft that was small on the outside, yet gigantic in capability to such purpose that the US Navy and US Marines pulled over 2,000 in five distinct major versions. And the average price was less than one-tenth of the cheapest 1981 aircraft to do the same job. As a mark of their true worth, the Skyhawk still flies with some of the air forces of the world. After the 1991 Desert Storm warfare, Kuwaiti Skyhawks were eventually sold to Brazil. The aircraft were delivered to Brazil in 1998 and, after extensive upgrading, became operation with the Brazilian Navy in early 2001. In its long light stand as a low-level fighter attack aircraft, the A-4 could boast capabilities needed to match almost any conceivable circumstance. After proving itself for almost half a century, the A-4 Skyhawk has more than just proven its worth. It has become one of the finest military planes ever made.